Imagine you met this new guy in school who looked nice, and you decided to make friends with him. You start this awkward conversation by asking him who are you, and he simply replies, I'm a human being, just like you. You chat for a little, and then you try to break the ice by a joke, which he normally laughs to. While talking together, a random weight suddenly falls on his foot, and he expresses a normal response to pain. After talking for quite some time, you mention philosophy, which he happens to be quite interested in, and he shows an apparent feeling of excitement. So our friend here can feel humor, pain, and excitement. But uh, the question is, how do you know for sure that he truly possesses these feelings and is conscious of them, and is not just an extremely high-tech robot who is programmed to mimic and show responses under certain conditions or stimuli? Now, Alan Turing once proposed that if you had a conversation with a machine that was so human-like that you thought that it was a real person talking to you, then this machine is conscious. However, we all know that this machine just imitates being conscious and does not have a true subjective experience of the world. It is merely a philosophical zombie. This is called the Turing test. But how can you make sure you're not surrounded by philosophical zombies everywhere who are masterfully programmed to mimic and show feelings without actually having them? This is actually an extremely hard problem in philosophy, the problem of other minds. Even reputable philosophers like Descartes only managed to prove his own existence but failed to prove the true existence of anyone else around him. If you think this idea is impossible, philosophers think otherwise by using the conceivability argument. They argue by saying zombies are conceivable. Whatever is conceivable is possible, therefore zombies are possible, possible but not actually true. A potential solution is by using the Occam's razor, which says that all things equal, the simplest solution tends to be the right one. Given that the simplest way to describe people around you is by saying they're conscious, it's also most probably true. But still, philosophers need to formally know how people around them have true feelings and are real conscious people, and they are still struggling with this question, especially that they haven't agreed yet on a true definition for consciousness.